What are we discussing on today's Locked on Dimebacks podcast? Who has the inside track on becoming the fourth outfielder for this upcoming season? And taking a look at some Corbin Carroll prop bets so you guys can win some money this MLB season. You are Locked on Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas, I'm a multimedia journalist, and I'm a graphic designer. So please go check out my website, MillerThomas24, down my portfolio.com. On there, you can see all my latest work from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms, so please continue to tell your friends. And one of those platforms is YouTube, so please hit, please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. We are trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before opening day. We're like stuck on 9-11 right now, so please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. Now for today's show, we are going to be looking at some Corbin Carroll prop bets off field that I think will win you guys some instant money this season. And we'll talk about who should be the fourth outfielder for this upcoming season. But I first want to tell you guys that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. All right, let's get into the Lock on Dimebacks podcast. Let's discuss who should be the fourth outfielder. Yesterday, we discussed who should be the number five starter in the rotation. Today, it's another training camp battle where we discuss fourth outfielder. And like yesterday, I'm trying to go, I'm going to try and go in the order of guys who I think are most likely to win the fourth outfield job. So it's kind of like a power ranking starting from the top if you want to view it like that. And so the guy that I think is the most likely to win the D-backs fourth outfielder spot is the guy that we're very familiar with already. Jake the Rake McCarthy, Jakey Wakey, still one of my favorite Arizona Dimebacks, still pretty young at 26 years old. But Jake McCarthy is coming off a pretty down season for the D-backs where he only put up a 644 OPS, a 243 average, and he was sent down a couple times throughout the season to the minor leagues just because his bat was just not producing enough. And so for Jake McCarthy, a guy coming off the 2022 season where he finished top five in the rookie of the year voting, he had a breakout season 2022. We thought he was going to potentially be a core member, uh, a building block going forward for the D-backs. And like with young players, sometimes that second year in the league, that sophomore slump after pitchers have read the scouting reports and have had times to adjust to you. That's kind of what happened to Jake McCarthy because I feel like he wasn't doing anything different in terms of his approach or the kind of stuff he liked to go after and attack. He just didn't yield the same results in 2023 as he did in 2022. And he's going to need to get better offensively if he wants to stick around every day. Well, he won't be an everyday outfielder, but if he wants to stick around for the long term on the D-backs, uh, he needs to get better offensively. And if his offense can get to a point where, you know what, we actually have the discussion, is Jake McCarthy's offense more valuable than Alec Thomas's defense? If we get to that conversation, then you know Jake McCarthy has greatly improved as an offensive player. And really, we don't need him to do anything that we haven't already seen him do back in 2022. Because if we get that Jake McCarthy, like that was a valuable offensive piece that guy batted 283 he had a 769 ops with the speed that he already possesses if he can get back to that level of quality contact and just putting the ball in play and hitting for a good average like that's all we really need with a 34 percent ops uh obp i should say 34 percent on base percentage in 2022 like that would make you feel pretty good if Jake McCarthy can at least replicate that average at OBP going to next season. And then, of course, the slugging is always going to be the big issue for Jake because he's just not a power guy. You want to see him get more doubles, 
more triples as well. So if he can at least tap into that gap power and still produce a lot of singles, still draw the walks, that would make Jake McCarthy a pretty valuable piece. And the slugging is going to be the area when when you look at his offensive arsenal. That's the area that he needs to improve in the most. And it doesn't have to be over the fence power. We just need more hard contact. We need more of that gap power. And if Jake McCarthy can provide that, he would definitely he, he will definitely be the fourth outfielder for the D-backs. Already probably the favorite to be the fourth outfielder. But if he wants to be the fourth outfielder for the D-backs for the next couple of years, for the next few years, we're going to see we're going to need to see a little bit more slugging from him because defensively. He's average at best, and he's average because of his speed. He can close a lot of the gaps. He can track down every ball. His um, arm strength is just not there. He's not throwing anybody out. So for Jake McCarthy, it has to be instinct. It has to be uh, uh, you need to have a good eye of how to track the ball, take the right angle to the ball. So as long as he's a smart defender out there, takes the right approach to these fly balls, then you can keep Jake McCarthy out there as a defensive player. He's not going to be elite out there, but his speed can at least close the gap to a lot of those balls that are hit in the gap. So he's at least a plus defender from that standpoint. But overall, he's probably just considered an average uh, defensive player. And when you look at his splits against both righties and lefties, Jake McCarthy actually is like fine against lefties. The issue is he didn't take advantage against righties. And for someone that you're thinking of as a platoon option. That's what the fourth outfielder is going to be. Jake McCarthy is going to be playing a lot against right-handed pitchers. If he is selected, he needs to do better against those righties. And so for him, you need his offense to just be flat out better against right-handed pitchers. Tori Lovello is, of course, huge into platoon situations. And if you're a platoon guy that can't convert in the platoon situations, it's going to be a tough time finding playing time for you if you're Jake McCarthy. So right now he has the inside track on being the fourth outfielder, but there are obvious flaws in his game from an offensive standpoint that he needs to improve upon. But I think his speed will probably be the biggest reason he wins that fourth outfield job because still you look at the last two seasons, he's played 99 games in each and he has over 20 storm bases in each season. So his speed is a real weapon. And of course the D-backs like to play in havoc like to play in chaos, and Jake McCarthy can still do that from a speed standpoint. The guy who I think is second in line to be the fourth outfielder is going to be the high, is going to be the dude who's the hottest name this spring training, arguably in Jorge Barosa. He's been in the D-backs organization for seven years, but only 22 years of age. And the thing that might give him the, the edge over Jake McCarthy He's a switch hitter. So when you're talking about platoon situations, this guy, righty, lefty, it does not matter. And he's been pretty effective from both sides of the plate. Now, the con against Jorge Barosa is his stature. The dude is like five foot nine. So that puts a cap on his power ceiling. He's just not super strong um, because of that small stature he has. But strong, uh, he has very strong plate discipline. His strikeouts to walks was like nearly identical last year. And he does have like Perdomo level speed. He's not Jake McCarthy fast, but Perdomo was a guy who would rack up like 20 stolen bases, but get thrown out like eight to 10 times in the minor leagues. Like Jorge Barosa is kind of like that. And as long as you're a smart base runner, like we saw with Domo this past year, like we've seen with Christian Walker, like Barosa is still someone that could probably get 15 to 20 stolen bases. Um, he's just not the, the pure speedster that Jake McCarthy is. He is fast, but he's not that, burner like a Jake McCarthy or Corbin Carroll. So Jorge Barosa, he's got strong play discipline. He's not going to strike out a ton. If you want a more maybe MLB ready bat, like Barosa from an offensive standpoint, might be able to put up better quality at bats than Jake McCarthy. But McCarthy has the experience. He has the plus speed. Uh, we've already seen him you know, perform at a pretty high level on the major league level. That's why he has the inside track of a Barossa. But if Barossa has himself a phenomenal spring training, McCarthy struggles, don't be surprised at all if Barossa wins the fourth outfielding job over Jake McCarthy this spring training. Now, I got three more guys who I think could be the fourth outfielder for the D backs this, not this spring training, but this upcoming season. And we'll talk about who those guys are coming up. 
But if you want to bet on the D-backs winning the 2024 World Series, because why would you not? We're actually going to be talking about Corbin Carroll prop bets in segment number three. And of course, all the prop bets are courtesy of FanDuel Sportsbook because happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. If you're like, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. My favorite thing to do on FanDuel is the same game parlay. Best believe I'm going to be running a parlay this Sunday for Patrick Mahomes to win the Super Bowl. So I'll be doing a little Chiefs money line, maybe Mahomes over on yards and Travis Kelsey over on yards because them boys are coming back home with a ring. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more of FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast, and let's discuss three more players who have a path to being the fourth outfielder for the D-backs this upcoming season. I think Jake McCarthy and Jorge Barrosa are clearly – The top two options right now, these next three guys are a little bit more swing for the fences type players. The the odds of them winning the fourth outfield are probably a little bit lower than these other two dudes, but if they have themselves really good spring trainings and also these guys are two of these guys are more rule five eligible coming up, um, not really having a lot of options. So that's why it's kind of now or never for a couple of these guys. At least the next two guys I'm going to talk about in this segment. Let me just get right into it and stop prefacing so much. The first guy I want to talk about, Christian Robinson. Still super young, only like 22, 23 years old. Still pretty well regarded in the MLB pipeline for the D-backs prospects. And Christian Robinson is still a tantalizing talent, to say the least. Christian Robinson, we still look at his numbers from last year. Like the traditional stats for Christian Robinson are still pretty monster overall. Like, even though this is a dude from this, this, even though 2023 was the first time Christian Robinson played since 2019, he still put up numbers like he hadn't missed a beat because he had a 283 average, a 915 OPS, 14 home runs, and 23 stolen bases in just 65 games. And of course, a lot of hitter friendly ballparks in both double a and uh some of the other minor league levels that the d-backs have but you don't really care christian robinson was able to still put up some phenomenal stats in double a and and some of the other minor league levels he he hit in like four different levels last year for the d-backs from rookie ball all the way to double a and crushed every single level now the issue with christian robinson that people don't like he strikes out a ton 86 strikeouts in 65 games the play discipline is probably the biggest thing holding him back but Christian Robinson is still a dude with tremendous talent, tremendous athleticism. I mean, if he still if he if he played, you know, 100 plus games last year in the minor leagues, he probably would have had a 30 40 type of season. Like Christian Robinson is still oozing with tremendous talent. This was a guy who was the D-backs top prospect for multiple years. We go back and look at 2021, Christian Robinson, top prospect. 2020, Christian Robinson top prospect like even in 2019 it was a top five prospect for the d-backs like this is someone every single season was considered one of the best prospects that the d-backs have and he had you no know, some legal issues that kept him away from the team like there were just a whole bunch of off the field stuff that kept christian robinson away but now that he's back with the organization he's uh, i believe rule five eligible as well he might be out of options so it's like this is now or never for Christian Robinson. If he goes out there in spring training and just looks dazzling and does everything that we've always wanted Christian Robinson to do, why not give him a look? He probably won't start the season with the D-backs, but if Jake McCarthy gets that first crack and he's just not performing and you send him back down to the minor leagues, why not give Christian Robinson the first call up to the majors and just let him see what he can do because this guy is still so talented and I want to see what he could do on the major league level. 
The next guy that I think is interesting, but a little bit older, going to be turning 27, Tristan English, another guy that's Rule 5 eligible. So if there's ever a time to give him a crack at being that fourth outfielder, the time is now. Righty batter, just like a Christian Robinson. And Tristan English is someone that has played a lot of first um, coming up through the minor leagues, but he also played some corner outfield the last couple of seasons. So maybe... He's a little Paven Smith-ish in that respect. I think he's probably a lot better athlete and defensive player than a Paven Smith, but don't expect elite defensive outfield from Tristan English. The thing that you want to see from Tristan English on the major league level is that offensive arsenal because he has a very efficient and sweet swing. He can spray it to all fields. Um, of course, when you look at minor league stats, especially in AAA, you always have to take it with a grain of salt because um, those stats are always kind of inflated because the D-backs minor league system, both their AA and AAA, their ballparks are arguably the two most hitter-friendly ballparks in Major League Baseball. But even with that being said, Tristan English last year, 300 average and a 938 OPS with 23 home runs. Like you're going to take those stats at face value. Yes, he played in the hitter friendly ballpark, but really impressive stats for Tristan English last year 103 Ks as well in 102 games. Like that's not awful about a strikeout a game. You probably want him to improve in that area. 52 walks in um, 100 games as well. So you probably want him to draw a few walks, cut down a little bit on the strikeouts, but full offensive arsenal so far from what we've seen on the minor league level. I, I like Tristan English a lot. The fact that he's a little bit older might mean that he's ready right now, can make an instant impact. So I wouldn't mind giving Tristan English maybe a look this upcoming season if things break the right way for him, either dude struggle or injury. I would not mind at all giving Tristan English a look. The D-backs have been known to give multiple outfielders a look in a season, right? We saw Dominic Fletcher get a look last year, and we saw Dominic Canzone get a look as well last year. So not out the realm of possibility that you could see multiple D-backs minor league outfielders get a look this season if the Jake McCarthy's of the world just don't work out. Then the final guy that I think could potentially get a look as the fourth outfielder this season and this is more of a deep cut aj vujicic i'm sure i said his name wrong but this is also someone hasn't even graduated to the triple a level yet or maybe it's aj vukovic that's probably how you say it hasn't even graduated to the triple a level just yet but another guy that's tantalizing because he is an athlete Almost won Mr. Wisconsin as a basketball player. Averaged like 28 and 13 as a basketball player in Wisconsin. Six foot five, humongous dude, really strong athleticism, has raw power, righty, raw power. And this is someone, when you look at the power, 24 home runs um, in his time in double A last year in 115 games. Probably want to cut down on the strikeouts. Probably want him to draw a few more walks, just like Tristan English. But a dude that's only 22 years old, so a lot younger than an English. Hasn't graduated to AAA, like I said, but another tantalizing talent that the D-backs have in their minor leagues. And another guy who did come up as a corner infielder, third baseman, kind of had to be pushed out the way because of other third basemen on the AA level. So he has played corner outfield a ton the last couple of years. So AJ Vukovic, I think, is another interesting option for the D-backs. And the D-backs don't choose Jake McCarthy or Jorge Barosa. Like if they went down, if they went down the path of Robinson, English, or Vukovic, I think you can't go wrong. I think all of them offer something when it comes to English. I think he offers maybe a well-balanced uh uh, plate discipline and contact. Vukovic might offer raw power. Christian Robinson, elite dynamic athlete. Barosa, another strong plate discipline guy. And then, of course, Jake McCarthy has that plus speed. Your fourth outfielder, of course, is not someone that's going to be starting every single day. So if they do have a specialty, you'll take that. And I think all these outfielders at least have a specialty that could help the D-backs out on the major league level. So I would not be upset with any of these options as the D-backs fourth outfielder in 2024. Now we'll get into some Corbin Carroll prop bets that could win you some money this season. But first. All right, all right, all right. 
Let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast and let's discuss some Corbin Carroll prop bets that could win you some money this season. Of course, I talked about on yesterday's podcast how I want to end every pod this week by looking at a fan duel like betting odd or prop bet or just something that I think is something you should bet on to win some money or if I just think there's some crazy disparity in their odds like yesterday we looked at the world series odds i thought it was insane how teams like the mariners and the minnesota twins were ahead of the d-backs in the world series odds so i want to call out fandle we love our partners at fandle but i thought that was a little crazy fandle so i want to call them out a little bit for having those two teams ahead of them and then of course also give you the opportunity to bet on the d-backs at plus 3500 because that means they're a great value if they're behind teams like the mariners and the minnesota twins so that's what we did on yesterday's pod that was our play of the day maybe we call this segment the, our play of the day so our play of the day yesterday d-backs world series odds plus 3500 13th best odds in major league baseball you get to have the reigning runner-up the reigning national league champ at plus 3500 13th best odds in Major League Baseball, absolute steal. And then for today, there's two player specials, two specific prop bets that I think are really enticing, and they're both pertaining toward Corbin Carroll. So the first one is regular season home runs for Corbin Carroll. His over-under is at 23 and a half. Now, you're not going to get great odds, minus 120 for the over minus 106 for the under, but I think the minus 120 for the over at 23 and a half, I think that's an absolute lock because I feel like if Corbin Carroll plays, what, 140 games next year, is there any way he doesn't hit at least 25 to 30 home runs for the D-backs? Like he played 155 games this past year, so maybe FanDuel is taking injury into account because 25 home runs in 155 games, you assume if he misses 10 more games, he doesn't hit that 24 home run mark that could be the case but wasn't Corbin Carroll also a guy last year who hit more home runs in the beginning of the season as opposed to the second half of the season like Corbin Carroll in the first 86 games had 18 home runs so he only had seven home runs in the last 69 games of the season so if we get the first half of Corbin Carroll for the whole season then you get a guy who's going to be near like 35 to 40 home runs. I guess FanDuel is betting on the second half guy. I guess they're betting that the dude that we saw in the second half is more realistic to the kind of power output that Corbin Carroll can have. So if we do get second half Corbin Carroll, then that probably is just an 18 to a 22 home run kind of a guy. But if we just get the guy from the first half last year over the course of 120 games, then Corbin Carroll is going to smash the over of 23 and a half home runs. And he's probably going to be over... 30 home runs because I do think Corbin Carroll could add a little bit more power into his offensive bag because like I just said if you do get that first half Corbin Carroll for the full season Corbin Carroll can be a 30 to 40 home run guy I think 40 is probably at the very max of his ceiling like I don't think he has as much power as a Ronald Acuna Jr. who can smash 40 to 50 home runs like Acuna already has two 40 home run seasons under his belt. I don't think Corbin Carroll has that much power, but I do think he could be in that 25 to 35 home run uh, uh, range pretty consistently. So uh, I think 23 and a half home runs for Corbin Carroll, I think that's an easy smash going to next season. And if he stays healthy, if he plays 150 games, I don't see any way how he doesn't smash that over. And then the other Corbin Carroll prop bet that I really love, Stolen bases, they have him down at 44 and a half stolen bases right now. And just like what we just discussed, he had 54 stolen bases. So this basically comes down to Corbin Carroll either getting hurt or Tori Lavello just saying, you know what? I don't want to run him as much. I don't want to run him into the ground. I don't want him to get hurt. But we just said, you know what? Corbin Carroll first half had a lot more home runs. He tailed off in the second half. So that's what FanDuel would be betting on that second half fall off. Corbin Carroll, when you look at the speed, he had 21 stolen bases, or excuse me, Corbin Carroll, when you look at the speed, he had 26 stolen bases in the first half last year in 86 games. He had 28 stolen bases in the final 69 games. So he actually had a higher stolen base rate in the second half of the season. So if you're FanDuel, you're not saying, oh, 
Well, last year he slowed down the second half, so maybe that's more telling of what he's going to do in 2024. No, he actually stole stole more bases as the season went on last year. Corbin Carroll, unless he gets hurt or Toy Lavella all of a sudden is like, you know what? I don't want to run the fastest player in Major League Baseball next year. I just don't see why he would lose 10 stolen bases off his total last year. I still think he's probably going to hit that 50 stolen base mark. Maybe he doesn't hit 54, but do I think he's going to lose 10 stolen bases off his total from last year? Probably not. And again, stolen bases are also a product of how much you get on base. He had a 362 OBP last year, a 285 average. So it's like, I guess Fandle would also be betting on Corbin Carroll maybe not getting on base as much or maybe not hitting the ball as well because if Corbin Carroll somehow turns into like a 290, 300 hitter or if that OBP goes from 360 to 380 and he gets even more stolen base opportunities, like I don't see any world where Corbin Carroll also doesn't smash this over. And it's basically, not basically, it is even right now for both the over and under. It's both set at minus 113. So if you're a, a betting person, I would go on FanDuel. I would go bet on that minus 113, go throw 20 bucks down on that. I would also go to that Corbin Carroll home runs, smash the over, throw 20 on that as well, throw a dub on that because I just don't see any world where Corbin Carroll comes into next season. And if he stays healthy for 150 games, I don't see any world where he doesn't hit at least 25 home runs and steals another 50 stolen bases. I just think that's where Corbin Carroll is at this point of his career. I just think he's that guy now, just like a Ronald Acuna. We know when Ronald Acuna is healthy, he's going to be putting up 30 to 40 home runs is going to be sealing between 35 and 70 stolen bases, right? So I think we should give Corbin Carroll that same respect. If he's a guy that plays 150 games, best believe he's going to be putting up video game numbers for the D-backs next season. I think those two prop bets are an, are an easy smash to get some money in your pocket this MLB season. Now that's it for this edition of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.